What's up, everybody? Welcome to a new English bit. I'm Katya. It's been a long time since I made a video on advanced verbs. If you want to check out the two previous editions, you can find the links in the description box. So today it's going to be the third edition. We're going to learn five C1 verbs and then five C2 ones. So are you ready to broaden your vocabulary? If so, grab a pen and your vocabulary notebook and let's kick off! So let's get started. First, we're going to learn five C1 verbs. The level of these verbs is determined by the Cambridge Dictionary. So the first verb on my list today is a formal one and it's to comply with. I think it's super useful. It means to obey an order, rule or request. And now let's look at three examples. The first sample sentence, we had to comply with a plethora of safety regulations. If you want to know what a plethora of something means, check out my previous lesson on 15 synonyms for a lot of. You can find the link in the description box and also the card over here. Number two, he refused to comply with his boss's orders. And one more example, there is too much red tape and too many rules to comply with. And now let's move on to our second verb, which is also formal and also super useful. And it's to comprise something and it can be also used in passive to be comprised of something or someone and it's a synonym of to consist of and to be made up of and now three examples the first one the exam comprises five parts so it's another way to say the exam consists of five parts Number two, each season comprises 10 episodes. Now let's look at one example used in the passive form. The European Union is comprised of 27 countries. In this case, we have to use the preposition of. If it's active, there is no of. And one more example, the company is comprised of employees of different nationalities. And now let's move on to our third C1 verb, which is to embrace. The first meaning of to embrace is to hug. For example, he embraced me. And the second meaning of to embrace is to accept something enthusiastically. It can be an idea, proposal or change. And now a few examples. The first one, she embraced the opportunity of moving abroad. And one more example, it's time to embrace clean energies. And one more meaning of to embrace is to include something. Let's put it into a sample sentence. The talk will embrace a wide range of topics. Let's continue. The fourth verb I want to look at today is to lessen. It means to diminish, to become or to make something smaller, weaker, less important or strong. And now three examples. The first one, meditation can lessen anxiety. So lessen is another way to say reduce. Number two, healthy diet and sport can lessen the risk of serious diseases. And one more example, the pain won't be forevermore it will lessen over time. And now let's move on to our verb number five, which can come in handy, and it's to strike a balance between A and B. And it means to find a reasonable solution between two extreme positions, contrasting or conflicting things. And now a few examples. The first one, it's important to strike a balance between work and relaxation. Number two, it's a question of striking a balance between working remotely 
and at the office. And one more example, sometimes it's hard to strike a balance between family and professional career. And guys, before we continue and learn five C2 verbs, just a super quick reminder, please make sure you subscribe to English Bits if you like my channel and your bell icon is on. There is a weekly lesson waiting for you. It's on Sundays at 12 p.m. Thank you. And now let's continue to learn five C2 verbs. Number six, to erode. It means to slowly reduce something, to weaken and destroy. Let's look at some collocations that you can use with this verb. For example, you can say to erode confidence, value, profits, power or support. And now three examples. The first one, inflation erodes the value of money. Number two, his self-esteem has been eroded by constant criticism. And one more example, company's profits have been eroded due to fierce competition. Number seven, I've got an informal verb, to go overboard. It means to do something in an excessive way, to do or say more than is reasonable or necessary because you are excited or angry. In the first example, I'll just buy a few things on Black Friday. I don't want to go overboard. The second example, you went overboard cooking this lunch. There is enough food to sink a ship. And one more example, she loves Christmas and she always goes overboard with presents and decorations. Number eight, to lose sight of. The first meaning is that you no longer see someone or something. For example, I don't know where your brother is. I've lost sight of him. And the second meaning is to forget an important fact or to fail to remember or consider something. The first example, I make sure I don't lose sight of my dream. And one more example, we shouldn't lose sight of the fact that, sadly, people don't have access to a free healthcare system in many countries. I think the beginning of this sentence can be very useful for your speaking exams. We shouldn't lose sight of the fact that and then whatever you want to say. Two more to go, number nine, to soar. It means to rise very quickly. We can talk about prices, temperatures, sales or costs. And now three examples. The first one, the cost of living is expected to soar. Number two, unemployment has soared as a result of the pandemic. And one more example, his popularity soared after starring a new Netflix movie. And last but not least, to withstand. It's irregular, withstand, withstood, withstood. And it means to resist and to bear and to be able to deal with a difficult situation. And also to be strong enough not to be harmed or destroyed by something such as heat, cold or pressure. And now three examples. The first one, the hotel withstood the earthquake. The second example, she was strong enough to withstand pressure. And the last example for today, the fabric can withstand high temperatures. So guys, that's it for today. Thank you for having watched this video up to the very end. I really hope you learned some new verbs. And if you did, please don't forget to give this lesson a huge thumbs up, to subscribe to my channel and catch me on Instagram where I teach English every day. There is a quiz and one word on a daily basis. Thank you for joining me today and see you next Sunday. Ciao for now!